how's it going? Fox back again for sound design tutorials. Uh, this is another request today. This one is by Ryan Eloff. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, it's for a track. It's called The Fields and Grace Caroline Out of My Head. Uh, it's a Carl Watson remix supported by Oliver Heldens. Um, yeah, he asked me to do the sort of underlying pumping subby bass, which you could hear that I just soloed there. It comes in at 119 on this track. There'll be a link to that SoundCloud track in the description so you can compare them. And uh, this patch is free to download, link in the description as well. So yeah, please subscribe if you enjoy this or any of my other tutorials, many more to come. So I'm going to show you how I made this. It's with Massive, as you can see. Um, a bit of processing on the chain. I've got some saturation, a bit of compression, and some EQ. We'll turn that off for now so you can just hear the, the Massive patch on its own. You are going to need some headphones or some proper monitors to hear this because it's a really, really low sub. Especially that lower note when it drops down. Yeah, um, the MIDI, I didn't get the MIDI exactly correct in this uh, compared to the original. It's not important. Um, you can get the general gist of it. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and initialize this. It's actually quite straightforward. It's all to do with a bit of pitch modulation and uh, the main LFO on filter 2, giving it that sort of wobble. So oscillator 1, um, keep it on the oscillator that it is, turn it to a square wave. Pitch it down an octave, so minus 12. Route it to filter 1. We want the filter mode in serial, so everything is going to go into filter 1, then into filter 2, and come out of filter 2. So you want the mix of filter 2 at the bottom. So as I say, when it's in serial mode, and you route everything to filter 1, like we are going to do these two oscillators, both the oscillators go into filter 1, then into filter 2, as long as filter 2 volume is up and then the mix coming out of two, so all of the sound passes through and then comes out filter two. At the minute it's just a pure square wave. Uh, we're going to change the spectrum mode to bend negative on this. Pull the intensity down to around about between 10 and 11 o'clock. Uh, the volume we're going to pull it back to about in between two and three o'clock on a clock dial. Um, this one is a sine square, oscillator 2, pull it all the way to the left so it's a sine. Turn it on, this one wants to be an octave down as well, minus 12. Same volume, roughly just above 3 o'clock. Doesn't sound anything like the sound at the minute, it's all to do with the modulation we've got going on in the filter. So, as I say, both of these oscillators now are going to go into filter 1, which is a low pass 4, which is quite a steep filter. This was just... Uh, cut off the frequencies that I wanted to give it a good starting point. Um, let's listen. Round about there, just before 12 o'clock on a clock dial. Um, we then want to turn filter 2 on, which it already is. This one is going to be a lower pass 2 filter, so it's not so steep a curve. And we're going to modulate this with an LFO to give us that movement. Uh, the starting point is going to be around about 10 o'clock on a clock dial. Zero resonance again. So the LFO that I used for most of the modulation was LFO 5. Uh, you want to change this to a triangle wave, make sure the crossfader is pushed to the top so it's only the triangle wave that we're using. This crossfader lets you blend between two LFO shapes. You can get some real cool uh, sort of modulation going on if you do that, but for this purpose we just want the triangle. We're going to sync it, set it to a quarter note. And we're going to drag this, drop it on the cutoff for filter 2, first modulation box push it so it's just under in between like the two F's you can hear that's giving us that pulsing feel that we want but we want to offset it slightly so it makes room for the kick it was sort of bump the kick was coming in sort of uh, the modulation was starting after the attack of the kick and to do that you can just drag it over um, just slightly to the right of this um, third box and when I bring the drums back in there, you're going to hear that. If 
if I move it to the middle, it's going to sort of clash with the kick. It's on beat. It definitely wasn't. It was off beat. So say drag it. Just slot it to the right of that third square in the modulation box. Everything's just moved. That's just moving everything out of the way. The kick, as I say, which it was definitely doing. Um, yeah, the most important thing once we've done that is uh, the modulation on the voicing and the pitch modulation. We'll do the modulation on the voicing first. So we're going to go to the voicing. We're going to give it four voices unison. We're going to turn the pitch cut off on. And we're going to use that LFO to modulate the detune. Um, not an awful lot, just that tiny little bit. Give it that kind of swell. I could hear um, in the, the track that the, geek, the bloke posted me to listen to, there was a definite sort of phasing in and out. I tried a chorus and I tried a phaser, and then I realised it was probably done by uh, the D tune. Um, it's called beating, it's where the notes sort of clash with each other and cut each other out. Every now and again, you get a swelling and it sort of ducks the volume a bit, which is a cool effect. Um, yeah, that's all I did in the voicing section. The main thing we need to do, it was definitely a pitch wobble as well as just the filter moving, is we're going to use that same LFO5 again on the pitch for oscillator 1 and 2. Um, the amount I had was 1.25, so 1 semitone and a quarter. Same for both. 1.25, 1.26, as close as you can get it. This is drastically going to change the sound now. This gives us, a, as well as wobbling the filter, which is in effect sort of doing the volume because we're such a low sound, it's wobbling the pitch as well. Sounding good, that's nearly, nearly the sound done. Um, I tried some insert effects, some distortion, it didn't work so well. Um, I ended up using the saturator outside of Massive. The only, excuse me, the only effect I used was a dimension expander. I had the dry wet on about 10 o'clock and a very small amount on the size. Watch for clipping as we've added new unison voices. Yeah, pretty much the sound done. The only thing I did at the end, you can do this to taste, it doesn't add much, but it is a subtle thing. Um, I modulated the phase of oscillator 1. Um, the starting point I had in between 8 and 9 on a clock dial. I used a different LFO for this. I used a sine wave LFO, so I pushed the cursor all the way to the top. Sync it again, quarter note, that's all I did. Just make sure it's a sine wave this time rather than the square wave. Drag it to the first modulation box for the modulation oscillator and give it that much, not much. I'll A-B this so you can hear the difference. Just helped with the overall swell of the sound, help it give it that um, classic sort of wobby, wobby, wobbly sound. Um, yeah that's it nothing to it i mean i say nothing to it it just took me an hour to make it to get it that fine but when you actually look at it it's one lfo doing all the work on the filter uh the two main things to me that make this sound are the pitch modulation and the um modulation on the voicing in the unison section but yeah that's it as i say um this patch is free to download in the description uh, make sure you subscribe up here if you enjoyed this and uh Check me out on Facebook and Google+. It's Sound Design Tutorials. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.